There's something lurking at the edge of our solar system. Something massive, unseen, unexplained, and that's just the beginning. Our little corner of the galaxy is packed with secrets. Frozen worlds no one's visited. Invisible forces pulling on planets. Even a future where the sun devours everything. These aren't science fiction stories. They're real, and you've probably never heard them. Comets, dirty snowballs. With glowing attitude, comets are like forgotten relics from the solar system's childhood. Frozen leftovers made of rock, dust, and ancient ices. They've been drifting through space for billions of years, just chilling, literally. But don't let that quiet energy fool you. Comets know how to make an entrance, because when one gets pulled toward the inner solar system and gets close to the sun, it wakes up. The heat causes the ice to vaporize, spewing out gas and dust in every direction. And just like that, it grows a glowing tail sometimes stretching millions of kilometers long. But here's the cool part. That tail always points away from the sun. Not because of speed, but because of something called solar wind, a stream of charged particles blasting out from the sun and shoving the comet's material back. So even if the comet's flying away, its tail still waves goodbye toward the sun. Every comet is like an icy rebel doing a slow motion fireworks show across the sky sometimes visible from Earth, and every time, breathtaking. The asteroid belt, cosmic rubble zone. Between Mars and Jupiter lies one of the solar system's busiest intersections. The asteroid belt, a chaotic region packed with millions of rocky fragments. At first, scientists thought it might be the remains of a shattered planet, something that exploded long ago. But the truth, even more interesting, these rocks are part of a planet that never got the chance to form. And the reason is simple. Jupiter. The gas giant's gravity was so strong, so disruptive, that it kept pulling and yanking at everything in that region. It stirred the pot before anything could settle. So instead of forming a world, it became a cosmic construction site, frozen in time. Most of these asteroids are small, like space boulders floating endlessly, but not all. Some are huge, and one is big enough to be considered a dwarf planet. But more on that in the next fact. Ceres, the mini planet with big mysteries. Deep in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, there's a dwarf planet you've probably never heard of. Its name is Ceres, and it's weird in the best possible way. At first glance, Ceres just looks like a big grey rock floating in space. But dig a little deeper, and things get interesting. For starters, it's the largest object in the asteroid belt, so big, in fact, that it's round, unlike most of the jagged rocks surrounding it. That's why astronomers gave it a special status, dwarf planet. But the real surprises? They're hidden beneath the surface. Ceres has water ice buried underground, and not just a little. There may be more fresh water here than on all the dry land of Earth. Combined, even stranger, scientists discovered mysterious bright spots on its surface. For years, no one could explain them. Some even thought it might be alien tech. Turns out, they're salty deposits, probably brine that seeped up from underground and left behind reflective salt crusts. But here's the thing. The way these spots reflect sunlight makes Ceres look like it's blinking at us. Not moving. Not glowing. Just reacting. It's kind of unsettling. And here's the wildest part. Some scientists believe Ceres may have once had a subsurface ocean. A hidden, salty sea sloshing around inside a rock in the asteroid belt. If that's true, then this lonely little world might have had the right conditions for life. Not just a rock, not just a dwarf planet. Ceres could be a forgotten piece of something bigger. Mars, the red desert world. Mysterious, cold, dusty, and completely lifeless, at least as far as humans go. We've never walked on Mars, not yet, but you know who has? Robots, lots of them. It all started in the 1970s with Viking 1 and 2, the first successful landers to touch down and send photos from the surface. 
Since then, we've turned Mars into a kind of robotic playground. From spirit and opportunity to the Curiosity rover and now Perseverance, each generation of machines has gone farther, lasted longer and done more science than the last. And then there's Ingenuity, a four-pound helicopter that became the first aircraft to fly on another planet. That's right, a tiny flying robot in Mars's thin atmosphere. At this point, more machines have driven or flown across Mars than humans have ever walked on the moon. They dig, drill, zap rocks with lasers, take selfies, and even send weather reports. If we ever build a colony on Mars, our robot fleet will have been there first, mapping the terrain, testing the soil, and figuring out how to survive. They are the pioneers that we just haven't caught up yet. The moon is slowly breaking up with us. We don't usually think about it, but the moon is drifting away from us, literally. Every single year, our lovely moon moves about 3.8 centimeters farther from Earth. That's about the rate your fingernails grow. Not a big deal today, but over millions of years, it adds up. A long, slow breakup in progress. It's not the moon being dramatic. It's just following the rules of orbital mechanics. Tidal forces between Earth and the Moon are gradually transferring energy. Earth slows down just a little, and the Moon slips farther away. Right now, the Moon is perfectly placed in our sky. So perfect, in fact, that it looks just the right size to completely block the Sun during a solar eclipse. But give it enough time, and that perfect alignment will vanish. Total solar eclipses will eventually disappear. Forever. Our planet will still have eclipses, they'll just be partial. The moon won't be big enough in the sky to cover the sun. It'll look like a glowing ring or just a nibble taken out of the sun's surface. And for future Earthlings, if they're still around, solar eclipses might become ancient legends. There was once a time when the moon could hide the sun, a slow-motion farewell between Earth and its oldest companion, cosmic heartbreak, brought to you by physics. The far side of the moon isn't dark, just private. We always see the same face of the moon, thanks to tidal locking. That means the moon spins just slow enough that one side always faces Earth. So what about the dark side? Well, it's not actually dark. It gets just as much sunlight. It's just the side we never see from here. Nothing sinister, just orbital math. The moon has quakes, moon quakes. These tremors come from various sources, tidal forces from Earth, cooling and shrinking of the Moon's interior, and sometimes meteor impacts. They're not as strong as earthquakes, but they can last for hours because the Moon's crust doesn't absorb shock well. So yes, even the Moon gets anxious sometimes. One day, the Sun will eat everything. The Sun is slowly burning through its fuel. In about five billion years, it'll run out of hydrogen, swell into a red giant, and likely engulf Mercury and Venus. Earth might be next. It'll get so big, it could stretch all the way out to Mars's orbit. Our calm yellow star will become a swollen, angry furnace. The Sun's final form. A white dwarf. After its red giant phase, the Sun will collapse into a white dwarf an Earth-sized remnant glowing with leftover heat. It won't produce energy, but it'll still shine for billions of years. A tiny, hot ghost of its former glory, quietly cooling in space. The Kuiper Belt, our solar system's icy junkyard. Just beyond Neptune, there's a massive ring of frozen leftovers. It's called the Kuiper Belt, and it's basically our solar system's icy junkyard. This region is packed with millions of icy rocks, comets, and dwarf planets, including Pluto. Yeah, Pluto lives out here, still salty about being demoted. Think of the Kuiper Belt like the cold, dusty attic of our cosmic house, stuff that's been sitting there since the solar system was born, untouched. Some of these objects haven't changed in billions of years, which means they might hold clues about how everything started. And it's huge. It stretches from about 30 to 55 astronomical units. That's up to 8 billion kilometers from the sun. Out here, sunlight is weak, 
shadows are long, and temperatures are way below freezing. But hidden in that cold, dark ring could be secrets to our entire origin story. Welcome to the Kuiper Belt, the solar system's forgotten frontier. The solar system's hidden giant way out past Neptune. Something strange is happening. A handful of distant objects way out in the Kuiper Belt are all orbiting in the same direction, tilted, clustered, almost like they're being pulled by something massive. But there's nothing there, at least nothing we can see. That's where Planet Nine comes in, a hypothetical planet, maybe five to 10 times the mass of Earth, orbiting so far away, it could take 10,000 to 20,000 years just to complete one trip around the sun. If it's real, Planet Nine would be the fifth largest planet in the solar system. But we've never seen it, not even once. So how do we know it's there? Because space doesn't just act weird without a reason. Those tilted orbits, that strange clustering, it all points to something hiding in the shadows. Some scientists think it's just coincidence. Others believe it's one of the greatest cosmic mysteries still waiting to be solved. A ghost planet, a missing heavyweight, maybe even a new chapter in the story of our solar system. Whatever it is, Planet Nine might be out there, watching us from the dark. Our solar system is weirder, faster, and way more mysterious than it looks in textbooks. And we've only scratched the surface. Hit that subscribe if you're into mind-bending space facts, because out here, nothing is ever truly still.